Hello everybody and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today I want to try something new. I want to put a spotlight on a specific plant and tell you everything that I know about this plant and the journey that the plant and I have been through together. So I thought let's start off with one of my absolute favorites, my Monstera adansonii. This Monstera adansonii is a subspecies laniata. There's a lot of different types or subspecies or cultivars, I'm not too sure, um, in the Monstera genus. Um, but this one is one that is quite commonly sold over here in Australia. So you can definitely get this at Bunnings, um, but there's also a few other varieties going around, I believe. I got a cutting from a friend in 2019. It was just an unrooted cutting of uh, just, a, just a vine with, I think it had four leaves. So I'll put some photos up on screen. Now, I chopped it into single node cuttings and I propagated all of them in water. And once they had sufficient roots, I started potting them up. So I had a little pot with just four shoots coming out of it. And as soon as I started seeing those new shoots coming out, I started putting it on a pole. Now, I believe that was only the first or second moss pole I've ever really made. So back then I didn't, I didn't really know too much about it, but turns out I was kind of on the right track with it. So in January, 2020, I then started popping it on a pole and it really just started taking to that pole pretty much immediately. As the shoots started growing, they started attaching themselves to that moss pole. I'm obviously making sure that I keep my moss pole um, moist at all times, but if you want to learn more about moss poles in general, I'll link my moss pole playlist at the end screen so you can check out any other uh, more in-depth tutorials about anything that I do with my moss poles. Right, so in this photo on screen, you can see that by March 2020, some of the vines really started crawling up that pot and I decided to put all four on the same moss pole so I can create a nice lush moss pole. Um, I, I, I just really wanted to create, you know, a really full plant to the extent that you can't really see the moss pole anymore. I do put all of my plants on the same side of the moss pole. So if you turn it around, basically the backside is empty but that's okay because my poles are usually sitting against a wall so there's no point in having leaves facing the wall i believe um, and i do think it makes a more uniform nice look uh, if they're all facing the right way or the same way as well yeah and from here it's really just doing the same thing again like make sure i keep the moss pole moist you know however many times you need to water the moss pole to achieve that it really depends on your conditions but a top tip is now, if you don't want to water your moss pole too often, just keep it in a humid environment and it will dry out uh, less quickly. By January 21, you see that the moss pole has started reaching the top and I actually gave it a, a short extension already. Um, at the time, I was still experiment with, experimenting with moss poles and I just put like a 45 centimeter extension on it. In hindsight, it's really not worth the effort. That plant just climbed up that 45 centimeter pole within like a month. Right? I'm sorry. Um, from that point onwards, I really just started using full extension. So a full 90 centimeter uh, pole on top, just to not have to chop and extend all the time. So in March, 2021, it was time for its first chop and extend. If you're not familiar with the chop and extend method, there is an in-depth tutorial in my playlist, which I will link at the end. So after the chop and extend, I took the top half, I potted it back up and then I re-extended it. It was pretty convenient timing because in March 21, I was also moving. So it was actually just much easier to move with a pole that is uh, not quite as tall. I really have to say that, I mean, I've, I've, I've only really grown plants in two um, locations uh, at my, old, my previous house and now in this apartment, which I moved into in March 2021. And um, I've noticed a huge difference in growth as soon as I moved into this apartment and really the main factor um, that has changed because it's really just down the road. So the, the conditions in general would probably be the same, but I get much more light in here. So I noticed a huge growth spurt as soon as all my plants were moved into the new apartment, uh, despite the fact that I kind of moved in autumn and then going into winter. So Despite the fact that I chopped it, um, it kind of just continued growing up that pole pretty consistently. So not really, um, you know, faced by the whole chop and extend thing. So by June, it started reaching the extension and by, uh, and by July, it really started reaching the top of the extension. So it grew really, really fast once it started settling into my new apartment. 
Now, I was actually just a bit over having to chop and extend it every couple of months. So in July, I just decided to give all of the vines um, a, a, a cut at the top. So um, I, I just cut the top so that I don't need to extend it. And I just, you know, I give myself a couple more months until it reshoots and, and then I'll have to re-extend it. So you can see that in August, the plant has actually gone back in growth because I chopped the top off. But I propagated them and then, um, you know, you can pop them back into the pot if you want to make a lush up hole, for example. In October 21, I then gave it its second chop and extend, took the top part, potted it up, re-extended it. As you can see by the photo on screen, it really just started continue growing up that extension. That photo up on screen at the moment was taken in December 21, and you can see the uh, top half that I potted back up and then re-extended. And you can see the bottom half as well. So that bottom half still had the four shoots on them, the top half actually the fourth one didn't quite make it so the top half now just ended up with three shoots um so the the, the bottom half just re reshoots right so um there's heaps of new growth coming from all of the shoots on that bottom part so you can definitely keep it but eventually i just run out of space so i usually trade the bottom half or i give it to a friend or you know, like a salad or a swap for another plant. And then it's really just doing the same thing again. So by February, it almost reached the top of the pole. By April, it definitely reached the top of the pole. And by May, I had to do a chop and extend. And that was the latest chop and extend. So by now, the plant has now started growing onto the extension. And um, yeah, it's just going to continue on from here. But basically, with this continuous chop and extend method, I make sure that I keep the most mature part of the plant and I'm giving it the ability to continue to mature while keeping it quite manageable, right? So I think this is, it's gone through three chop and extends, meaning that I chopped off about two and a half meters worth of pole already. So this would have been at about four meters, four or five meters at this stage, right? I mean, that's obviously not maintainable uh, or not realistic in an indoor setting. So yeah, that's kind of been its journey. So what have I learned about it? Um, it's a monstera, so it's probably more tolerant to drying out, but I still try and keep the moss pole as moist as possible, but I'm not as worried if it dries out um, compared to like a velvet philodendron, for example, where I just maintain the pole uh, moist at all times. I have to admit, um, at the beginning when I did my first couple of chop and extends, I didn't really share it with, with you guys online because I really wanted to make sure that it works before I go out there and, you know, I preach about um, a certain technique that I like to use if, if I don't have the results um, that kind of back me up. But now that I've done these chop and extends probably like, I don't know, 15, 20 times, I have to say it's, it's such a good method. Um, it, and really the the what I was what I was worried about initially, right, is that when you take the top cutting, it's not fully rooted. I mean, every node roots into the moss pole. So that's definitely the requirement for the chop and extent method to be successful. But I still wasn't too sure if the root system is actually enough. And um, I'll put a video up on screen. So what you can see here is I'd lift the bottom part out of the pot. And that bottom part used to be the top part in October 21, right? So when I potted that top part up into the pot in October 21 and then re-extended it, those roots just went absolutely nuts. So it was root bound within five months or so, right? So I feel like the roots in that, in that moss pile are just really dying to be given more space. So as soon as you pot it up, that root system is going to expand. So far, I've had absolutely no issues. Definitely monsteras are pretty easy in their root quite um, voraciously. But even with uh, more finicky growers like uh, Vericosum, I haven't had any issues with my chop and extent. So I can definitely highly recommend them. Now, obviously, for it to mature and grow these large leaves, um, and I suppose that's probably why you clicked on this video, you want to see how did I get to these large leaves? Well, first of all, time, right? you got to give it time. So this plant is now, what, two and a half years old. So you can't expect the same results within half a year. So it's just consistently letting it grow and just giving it enough time, but also light. And in nature, these plants would grow up a tree and they would mature as they climb up the tree because they get access to more light. So if you wanted to grow larger leaves, you need to give it more light. And of course, fertilizer. The, you know, the plant is hungry, it wants to eat. Where is it gonna get all of that energy from to grow these big ass leaves, right? So 
um, I fertilize it or I, I give it nutrients um, and I link the company uh, down below that I use. So it's liquid nutrients um, and I, I put them in the, in the water that I use to water the moss pole. I only water the pot when I initially pot it up, but then going forward, I only water the pole and I just let all of the water drain through the pole into the pot. So I don't really ever worry or check on the pot in itself. Like I just let gravity do that for me. And so far I've had no issues with that at all. If you want to learn more about how I water them, you can guess by now there's a tutorial in my Moss Pole playlist, which I will link at the end. So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I've got to say. The pest that is probably the most likely to appear on this is uh, thrips. I've had thrips on it once. Uh, I used um, a spray called Confidor by Bayer and they're, they're gone with just one application. So maybe I'm just really lucky, but probably the thing that I do is I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a helicopter parent when it comes to my plants. So I look at them all the time and as soon as there's the, the early, early signs of pests, um, I start treating it straight away. As soon as the pests really start, you know, throwing a bit of a party, it's much harder to get rid of them because they're kind of settled in. They like it. Yeah. It's not super fussy with humidity. It's in my living area where I don't control the humidity. So it can be anything between 30% and 90%. It just really depends on how rainy it is. So it doesn't seem to be too fussed about it. Now, of course, look, I showed you the timeline that my Adansonia has gone through um, just to show you what potential um, some of these plants that you might be familiar with uh, have. That doesn't mean that every single plant is going to take exactly that time to grow up, right? It really depends on your conditions. I believe I'm really lucky from a light perspective. I get a lot of great light. So I think that's really what's making my plants mature quite fast. But it doesn't matter. What it, if it takes five years to grow that, that, that large, then so be it, right? Ultimately, to me, it's all about growing them and just seeing each leaf after the other grow a little bit larger. Um, that's really what gets me excited. I really just wanted to show you what this plant can turn into um, if you give it a lot of time and care. Um, and I hope it's going to inspire you to pick up one of these plants and maybe grow it to maturity as well. You know, again, I'm not a, I'm not a major expert. Um, I, I really just take plants that I like and uh, I grow them and I'm here to share my experiences with you. So I can't speak much about the species or the ID and so on. I, I honestly just believe people that told me on Instagram that that's an Adansonia subspecies laniata and I'll take it for what it is. The ID, the money, none of this is really important to me. I, I just really like it. It's definitely one of my favorite plants just purely because of the leaves. I think um, they're stunning. And honestly, it was for free. I got it as a free cutting from a friend. So I love taking something very small, very affordable, okay, for free and just growing it into a large statement piece. All right, I think I'm kind of waffling on now. I clearly don't have much more to say about this plant. So I just really hope you enjoyed the visual of it. I hope you enjoyed the journey and let me know if you want to make this into a thing. Should we make a series out of it? Is plant spotlight a thing? I don't know. And if it is, what plant would you like to see next? Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Take care.